I look and feel like shit, but you look great. And you're telling me you're also nervous. Like, I don't get it. How can I have that? I want that. What did you do? And, and it I, was so surprising to me how many things I came up against that I wanted to go, ooh, but yeah, but I can't do that. And one of the first ones was public speaking. Like, the thought of public speaking was so uncomfortable to me that even when I pursued this work and I was super passionate about it and inspired and really wanted to share this with the world, I didn't want to have to do that on a stage in front of people. I wanted to do it quietly, one-on-one, -on -one, because you and me in a room wasn't scary to me. But this was terrifying. And it was so, it was just one conversation that Aaron and I had very early in, in my career where I was getting very nervous about, we were working with a group of like 30 or something. And I remember I did not sleep the whole night before. And that was my pattern up until then because I had so much thinking about being nervous and uncomfortable about speaking in front of a group of people that I would keep myself awake worrying about that. And then to your point, trying to come up with a strategy to get rid of that bad feeling. So that just keeps you doubly up. <laughs> so I would get up exhausted, and we were going to work with this group the next morning. And I think Aaron maybe could see it in my face, maybe was just saying, he's like, how are you doing this morning? And I was like, yeah, I didn't really sleep last night, and I'm really nervous. And, and it was so intriguing to me, because Aaron goes, oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> and he was so like, eh. so anyway. And I remember thinking, you're nervous too? Because I look and feel like shit, but you look great. And you're telling me you're also nervous, like, I don't get it. How can I have that? I want that. What did you do? And I said that to him. I said, oh, so you're nervous too? He says, oh, yeah, I get nervous all the time. And I said, great. What do you do to get over that? And he laughed and he goes, you don't want to do anything. It's just a thought. And it was like, Ah, oh, it's that again. It's that. <laughs> it's that stupid thing again, like everywhere. I'm teaching this to people for a living, and I missed it right there in that one. And it was so, because I could see, oh yeah, he was lighthearted, not because he didn't have nerves, but because he wasn't trying to do anything with it. And I was heavy and burdened and exhausted, and it stayed up all night because I was trying to fix it. And when he said that, I was like, oh yeah, what if I didn't have to do anything with that? And it was the strangest experience because I remember we sat down with that group and I had a little talk with myself in my head, which I realize is where I spend most of my life is having talks with myself in my head. But <laughs> it's like, okay, just, just be nervous. And, 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 and I remember I set, and this is just totally arbitrary, this is stupid, I set one rule for myself, which was to not fall off the stool. Because before I used to get so nervous I would get dizzy. And I would feel like I couldn't breathe, and I would think, I'm going to fall off. I'm literally going to tip over. I'm going to faint, and this is going to be so embarrassing. So I got on the stool, and I just thought, all right, the only thing you have to do is stay on the stool. Don't worry about anything else. It's like, all right, I can handle that. And to my surprise, two hours went by, and then Aaron said, well, should we take a break, and, and people can stretch and get some coffee? And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, I, I got unnervous, and I don't remember when. Like somehow I'd gotten involved in talking to a group of people and I'd forgotten myself and I'd forgotten my nerves. And all of a sudden, two hours had gone by and when Aaron mentioned the clock, I thought, oh wow. And it, for a split second, I tried to chase it and go, oh, how did I do that? <laughs> like as if I made it happen and I realized, oh no, 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 that's the whole thing. Don't do anything and it'll happen to you. And so all of a sudden, public speaking became something that looked totally doable and in the realm of possible for me. And so since then, I've gone on to speak. We spoke a couple weeks ago at a conference with you know, 600 people. A few months before that, I spoke to 800 people. And it doesn't bother me anymore, not because I don't have moments of fear, but because I understand the principles are on my side, not working against me. So if I don't do anything with it, suddenly it's possible to public speak. And then that has just been the metaphor for everything that's happened since. I remember when we decided to start our company, I, I sort of confessed to Aaron that I had had these ideas of starting a company, and, and I was quite excited about that. And he said, oh, me too. And all of a sudden, before you know it, we were kind of talking out a business plan. And then I remember all of a sudden having this thought like, but we can't start a business. Like, I'm not someone who starts a business. And I immediately started thinking up all these limitations that looked real to me. And I remember saying to Aaron, like, so are we going to, like, do this? 
And he's like, yeah, I don't see why not. And I was like, okay, like, like um, in a couple months? And he goes, how about now? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, how about now? Like in my head, it was like, you can't just do do that or you have to do that slowly. And it was so intriguing to be like, oh yeah, that's made up. Oh yeah, that's made up. And every time I've ever realized my head, my thoughts are gonna come up with ideas and go, no, you can't do that. But when I see that's a thought, all of a sudden it's not a barrier anymore. And next thing I know, my head is automatically giving me ideas on how that's possible. 